as we prepare this worship message and prayers and songs, it is the first week of August. And you could be on vacation or fishing or hiking or reading or streaming movies or shows. You could be uh, taking a nap or sleeping in. The possibilities are vast. And yet you have chosen to make this a priority. I want to thank you for being here now. And I also want to say thank you for the encouragement and the support that you've shown both to me personally and to the church over these past months. To me, it seems like we are engaging in uh, some struggles with other folks more and more. We're trying to deal with uh, a way through this pandemic, We're trying to figure out how we might rise above and overcome years of systemic racism. We're dealing with issues of joblessness and poverty for which both of these conditions have contributed. And so it is that we find ourselves struggling, wrestling, if you will, with uh, many people and ideas and hopes. Today in our worship experience, I would invite you not away or a part of that struggle, that engagement, those encounters, but would instead invite you to make your faith a vital part of the very fabric of each of these and all of these, of everything that you are dealing with that concerns you, that makes you rejoice and celebrate. I'd invite you to an encounter and an engagement with your faith, with your relationship with God and with your relationship with others. Let us worship and let us wrestle. Good morning, my name is Claudia Lillibridge and I'd like to read the following poem as the opening prayer this morning. It's a poem entitled, God Will Count Your Honest Try and it's written by William Henry Dawson. If in life's great onward battle, you have done your best and lost. If amid the din and rattle, you regarded not the cost. If you met your foemen bravely, if you dared to do or die, God will credit you most surely for your fearless, honest try. Have you sometimes felt discouraged, felt that life had lost its charm, and that every effort failed you, bringing to you only harm? Look within and ask this question, have I done my level best? If you answer without guessing yes, then God will do the rest. Has this neighbor won more glory, that one more of earthly store? Though your hair is thin and hoary, are you poorer than before? Have you helped with hands quite willing? Have you heard the orphans cry, given part of your last shilling? God will count your honest try. Thank you.
I will be reading Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31. Jacob wrestles with God. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Jacob's wrestling encounter is a tradition of a prophet who finds his way in life, often in a moment of being paused. There is so much that Jacob's life is counted as success. But here again, he is halted. A couple weeks ago, we revisited that night when Jacob had the sweet spiritual encounter of dreaming about a ladder, uh, the ladder to heaven, of hearing God's voice who made promises about land and descendants and blessing, and most important of all, of having God's protection and presence always. Today we find Jacob again on the edge of something, a pause between a promise and a future. He sent away herds and gifts to his brother Esau, but he doesn't know if Esau will receive them in the intent that they were given. He wants to soften up Esau but he's not sure how Esau receives these gifts or how Esau's army will treat him. Barbara Brown Taylor describes Jacob's state of mind as knowing that he had changed, but he couldn't imagine if Esau had. In this pause between promise and future, Jacob is left alone. He finds himself alone. Some of our most painful experiences in this life are times when we sense that we are all alone, when we're isolated or secluded. The onset of COVID-19 has pushed many of us into all kinds of dimensions of being apart from one another. For me, its most cruel shove was taking my spouse to the hospital. As I sat in the parking lot and waited, I was worried about 
uh, what she was going through, about what it would be like to not have someone to stand by her side as she went through tests and answered questions and just waited for answers. I remembered when I was in that same emergency room many years ago when I had taken a rock to my head and uh, I was overcome at one moment in time when I received word from uh, someone on the outside who had heard the emergency call and wanted to know how I was and wanted me to know that uh, prayer chains had been activated. I had visits from my family and friends and it was truly an overwhelming uh, moment. I was uh, brought to tears by the support of prayers and the presence of others. And so it was that I was deeply distressed by the idea of uh, someone I care about who was going through this all alone. Somewhere in the midst of the remembering and the worry, I became aware that in that shadiest part of the hospital parking lot that I too was finding myself alone. Somehow, the aloneness wasn't just for the one I left, but it was for uh, an act of leaving someone behind to be alone. That is what Jacob did. My thoughts were about not only the one I had left, but also about this and that and the other and them and all kinds of things. And I suppose the great lesson is that our seclusion is never a fresh moment. Within ourselves are always the memories and the experiences that we bring with us. There's also the imagining of what might unfold in the future. Here is a place where we are not only haunted by demons, but an opportunity to wrestle with the God who is at work in our world and within our very lives. It's a time where we can discover the nuggets and gems of our faith being unearthed and our beliefs being worked out within our struggle for purpose and our direction. With God, we wrestle and find out who we are and where we are heading. Like Jacob, because we have wrestled with the mystery of God, we always emerged as changed persons. Sometimes that's a painful experience to go through. Sometimes it leaves a mark on us that we carry forward forever. But the truth is, with God, we are always raised up to new life. Being isolated gives us an opportunity to be raised, to be lifted. Let us pray. God, we sometimes do our best to try to maintain a distance away from you. And you, in your loving nature, spread before us a picnic of grace. You wave us over. You have a huge smile on your face. We whisper our worries, and you say, you don't have to shout. Your compassion is spread over our brokenness like we spread butter on toast. When we are tempted to spend our lives on all the luxuries offered to us by the world, you show us a table piled high with grace and hope, peace, joy, wonder, and awe, and above it you place a sign which says, Free Store, everything that is important is for you. All of this is yours for the taking. 
when we get ourselves all worked up or over whether or not we can meet expectations, you take out the hanky from your back pocket and you wipe our faces, you hand us a cup of cool water, and you reassure us, telling us to relax, that you have taken the burden away from us. God, we rejoice in your gifts, which are ours. Amen. And now go in peace, knowing that God will always be by your side, with you in everything that you do, and knowing that that is not always a way to protect you from being scathed and reshaped and reformed. Go in love, offering healing and hope to others. Go in joy that others may be lifted and inspired by who you are and who you are becoming. Amen. Mm -hmm.